Welcome back to part three of solving a first order homogeneous differential equation written in differential form. Now we'll look at an initial value problem. In the previous two videos I went over this slide on how to determine if the first order DE is homogeneous and then also how to solve the first order homogeneous differential equation. For a quick overview before we do our example, the first step is to make sure that we do have a homogeneous differential equation by making sure function M and N are both homogeneous functions of the same degree. And then if it is homogeneous, we can solve it by performing a substitution and then using separation of variables. The substitution is going to be either y equals x times v, and therefore dy is equal to x dv plus v dx. Or we can use x equals y times v, and therefore dx is equal to y dv plus v dy. Let's take a look at our example. The first step is to put the given differential equation in the form given here below. So let's go ahead and subtract x, y squared, dy on both sides. So we can write this as the quantity y cubed minus x cubed dx minus x, y squared, dy equals zero. Notice how we do have this initial condition and therefore after we find the general solution, we can actually find the particular solution given that y1 is equal to two. But first things first, we need to make sure this is homogeneous. So we need to recognize that m of x comma y is equal to y cubed minus x cubed and n of x comma y is gonna be equal to negative xy squared. Now we need to find m of tx comma ty as well as n of tx comma ty. So here we'd have t cubed y cubed minus t cubed x cubed. If we factor out the t cubed, we'd have t cubed times the quantity y cubed minus x cubed, which is function m, so we can write this as t to the third times m of x comma y. So m is a degree three homogeneous function, and if n is also a degree three homogeneous function, then we know our DE is also homogeneous. So for function n, we would have negative tx times t squared y squared. Notice how we do have a factor of t cubed, so we can write this as t cubed times negative xy squared. Notice how again this is function n, so we can write this as t to the third times n of x comma y. Since n is also a degree three homogeneous function, we know the original differential equation is a homogeneous differential equation. So now we can solve this using substitution. Let's go ahead and do that on the next slide. Remember we do have a choice of substitutions, Notice how this function here, function n, is simpler than function m. So it's gonna be easier if we perform a substitution for dy, which means we're gonna let y equal x times v, and therefore differential y is equal to x times dv plus v times dx. So now we'll go ahead and perform the substitution. So for y cubed, we'd have x cubed v cubed minus x cubed dx minus x times y squared, which would be x squared v squared, times dy, which is x dv plus v dx. Now we'll clear the parentheses and simplify. So we'll have x cubed v cubed dx minus x cubed dx. Here we're going to have negative x to the fourth v squared dv, or minus x to the fourth v squared dv, and then minus x to the third v to the third dx. Notice how the first term and the last term are opposites. This is going to simplify to zero. And since this term contains dv, let's move it to the other side by adding x to the fourth v squared dv to both sides. So we'd have negative x cubed dx equals positive x to the fourth v squared dv. We want all the x's on the left side with dx, 
So now we'll divide both sides by x to the fourth. This leaves us with negative one over x dx equals v squared dv. Now we'll integrate both sides of the equation. So here we'll have negative natural log absolute value of x plus c equals, here we'd have v to the third divided by three or one third v to the third. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. We need to find our general solution in terms of x and y. So we need to perform a substitution here for v. Remember we started with the substitution y equals x times v. So v is equal to y divided by x. So now we can write this as negative natural log absolute value of x plus c equals, we'd have y cubed over three x cubed. Let's go ahead and write this as c equals y cubed over three x cubed plus natural log absolute value of x. Now let's clear this fraction by multiplying both sides by three x cubed. So we have three x cubed c equals, we'd have y cubed plus three x cubed natural log absolute value of x. So this would be our general solution, but remember since we have this initial condition, we can now find the particular solution. Since y one equals two, that means when x is one, y must be equal to two. So using y one equals two, we would have three times one cubed c must equal two cubed plus three times one cubed times natural log absolute value of one. Well natural log absolute value of one is equal to zero. So we have three c equals eight, divide both sides by three. We have c equals eight thirds. Now that we know what c is equal to eight thirds, we can go back to our general solution here and replace c with eight thirds. So we'd have three x cubed times eight thirds equals y cubed plus three x cubed, natural log absolute value of x. But notice how these three simplify out. So our particular solution is going to be eight x cubed equals y cubed plus three x cubed, natural log absolute value of x. Let's finish this by taking a look at this graphically. We can use the original differential equation to generate the red slope field shown below. Y one equals two represents the point with coordinates one comma two, or this point here. Notice if we graph our solution, it does fit nicely in the slope field and passes through the point, which is our initial condition. So this does verify our solution is correct. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.